Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of Simply Violin. Uh, when I initially set out to record the video about the do's and don'ts uh, for young musicians heading to college, I intended it to be one video, but uh, when everything was said and done, it ended up being a bit too long, so I've split it up. I released the first half, the do's, uh, last week, and if you haven't seen that yet, I'm going to include the link to the video in the description below and I encourage you to go check it out. I think there are some very good points. And this video is going to be the continuation of that. Um, the don'ts, the five things that you should not do um, if you're a young musician starting out in college or heading to college. So I hope you enjoy it and let's head back to that video. So these are all the don'ts that I came up with. The first thing is do not expect to be babied. Okay, college is not high school or middle school anymore um, you know and this is I think a really shocking thing to many people because when you're used to a private teacher when you're a kid who was everything to you they guided you musically technically professionally they put auditions in front of you different competitions in front of you all you had to do was just do what they say and you develop into this musician um, if you were blessed with a teacher like that do not expect that in college. You're not going to get that. Uh, even the most loving and caring uh, teacher in college can cannot substitute uh, what you had when you were a kid because when you were a kid, that teacher didn't have a deadline. Um, you were you were you were potentially there in in this person's studio for six, seven, ten years, and uh, you know there was no rush. But when you get to college, you only have four years. So and and so much of it is dependent on preparing you for uh, for the juries at the end of the year. So there really isn't that great amount of flexibility. And the other thing that that you're not going to get, you know, when I was in high school or in middle school, and I would go to my private teachers, a lot of times we would go overtime. In college, you don't get that because it's you know you have a schedule. Right after you, there's someone else already sitting there waiting. So it's very strict. It's really the middle ground between your childhood and the professional world. So it's, it's supposed to be more grown up, more mature. People don't care as much about you. Um, so you got to be prepared for that. And you kind of have to take yourself into your own hands. Um, soak up information where you can and find a way to, to incorporate that into your playing and into the way you are quicker, faster and more independently. Uh, don't expect someone to tell you what to do. Um, you know, I didn't know isn't really an excuse that flies very well in college. You may get some leeway your freshman year, uh, but you'll be better off if you just simply go into it without the expectation of being babied. You are now more mature, you're responsible for how you play, how you do in school, and what happens to you. So don't be shocked by that. Uh, so yeah, don't expect to be babied. Number two. Do not wait for the end of school to pursue your career or career opportunities. This was something that people were always telling me and I just never listened to them. You know, I was so um, sort of encompassed by, by this false sense of being busy. You know, college, they, they put you into this regiment. There is a, there is a schedule. And it's pretty busy between uh, chamber music and orchestra and all the academic studies and all these things. Um, you do get busy. Uh, and it's very easy to feel like I just don't have time to do anything else. And the truth is that there probably is some time. If there are competitions out there, use college to prepare yourself for that. If there are auditions and things like that, go for it. Um, or even a, you know, a simpler more obvious thing if you have a passion for chamber music and you want to be in a professional string quartet school is the best time to put that group together find musicians that you really mesh well with who you respect and who are responsible because you're going to need to have chamber music credits anyway the school will provide you with a weekly chamber music coach it's the perfect opportunity to start building a chamber group uh, and then go to competitions with that chamber group. Go out there and play concerts because when you graduate and you no longer have this network of students around you who are willing to rehearse with you every day for free, it gets very, very difficult to convince people to be in a professional chamber group with you because they're all 
you know, accepting opportunities where they have to make money. They have to pay rent. They have to feed themselves. Whereas in college, dorms are covered by the tuition you paid for. And um, food is covered by the cafeteria, although it's mo most likely going to be really gross. Um, that's probably another thing you shouldn't expect. Good food in the cafeteria, but never mind. Um, so definitely pursue. Think about the future while you're in school because it's such a great time to do that. Don't underestimate it. Don't miss that opportunity. Um, remember, school is... It feels like the real world and it feels like you're really like somewhere, but it's it's all a facade. It's uh, It's a great... Uh, environment but it's not the real world yet no matter how important all of it seems it's still just preparing you for things so don't don't lose focus on that if there are things you can do uh, opportunities that you can take outside of college um, then you should you should definitely put yourself out there don't not at a detriment to, to your schooling don't don't um, undercut your development within school, but uh, find that nice balance between those two elements. Number three, do not let competitiveness bring you down. Um, you know, you walk around and you see people and you compare yourself to them and you start to really like get kind of defensive about it. You either become aggressive towards yourself, like why am I not? as good, what am I doing wrong, all these things, or you become defensive against other people. Um, it's just it's just not good to like to go into college and to start looking around and to start putting yourself down about where you are in terms in terms of the level. Because there are gonna be a lot of people out there with these huge egos right in your face and it's gonna be it can be very distracting. While this is happening, remember there is room for everybody in the music world, in the real music world. If you're really great at what you do and you really focus, you stay in your lane, you, you focus on what you need to do to develop as a player and you just do that and you don't look around and you don't compare yourself to other people. The only good way to compare yourself to other people is when it becomes encouraging, when it becomes inspiring. If you can do that, fine, you can look around, but for the most part, don't let the competitive energy that exists in music, uh, in music schools, uh, bring bring you down. Uh, just stay in your lane, stay focused, and just work on. The only person you should compare yourself to is you the day before, and just try to be try to improve on that the whole time. Okay. Number four, um, on what not to do, and that is do not be fake. You know, being a musician there's a certain level of ego that's required. Um, you know, to be able to stand on stage and to uh, convey a certain interpretation and to convince an audience that this is the right way, you have to have ego, you have to have audacity. Uh, the problem is when you let that, that type of audacity leak into your non-musical, non-professional life, when you start to take on this persona in a day-to-day -day social environment. There are a lot of people, and you're gonna notice them, they're gonna try to convince you um, that, they're, that they have this big career, that they have all these opportunities, that they're so great. Um, and just, just don't pay attention to that, and don't be that person. Uh, you know, college, is, it, it's not a long time. Four years goes by pretty quickly, and being fake and, and, and being disingenuous is, is, is just a waste of time. You, you should spend all of your time focusing on being completely honest to yourself as to where you are in your development, what you need to do to get better. Because if you're running around um, just trying to prove to everybody that you're great, then you're probably not working as hard as you can to actually match the level that you're this of this uh, impression that you're trying to create. Um, and the other thing is that more so than not, people will react negatively to it. Either it's similar people who are just going to clash with you competitively or it's just going to be uh, other people who are annoyed by that. Uh, and as I said earlier, you want to make friends and, and being, being fake and, and, and just trying to talk yourself up and, and all these things, it's not a great way to make friends, at least the right kind of friends. Uh, and I only say this because it, it's, it's everywhere. Everybody's trying to, to earn their spot and build a reputation um, and, and a lot of it has to do with sort of blowing up this bubble. And it's actually quite irritating. Uh, and I think it exists in most um, 
sort of artistic fields uh, because at the end of the day music is uh, subjective you know what's great and what's not great is sort of up for interpretation and so many people think that if they create enough buzz then who's to say they're not that great um, but maybe you can use that tactic uh, later on in your profession when you're self-marketing but while you're in school don't waste time with that stay completely honest and truthful to yourself to your friends to your teachers stay humble and keep your keep your mind focused and just keep improving and you can't go wrong with that number five this is I think really important and a little bit controversial especially to the parents listening um, do not be afraid of making a change and what I mean by that is don't be afraid to if you're in school let's say for a year you've been studying with a person um, and for whatever reason it's just not working you're miserable the teachers not it's just the chemistry is not there they're not giving you what you need what you want you feel like your playing is getting worse don't be afraid to explore the the possibility of changing your teacher you know once you're in school you have the right to go and seek a, and to change studios if you if you can find another teacher who's you know more to your style this is a very sensitive thing because teachers don't like to take students from one another but if you can get it to the point where you and your current teacher agree that it's just not really working I would suggest for you to consider changing teachers I've seen so many times where people just crawl through their first for their fourth four years of bachelors miserable with their teachers and they come out at, come out the other end worse players and their their passion and love for music has been deflated just because they let themselves be in this negative environment for too long um, and it's just no good you know you have to remember that music the, the music school college is there to serve you you are there to take something from them it's not the other, the other way around you don't owe the college something you you owe them respect and you owe them the full effort you know to really dive into the environment and to do everything you can to make it a positive um, experience but at the end of the day you're there to get something from them you know when you graduate in four years as I said before your relationship with that college is going to be pretty minimal they're going to give you a degree they're going to maybe give you some like tchotchkes like a mug or a book or something but that, that pre that's pretty much it you know you're going to have trouble getting through that door when you're done uh, even today like the security hounds me I don't have an ID and I pretty much have to be signed in like like anybody else while you're there focus on what you need and if you're not getting what you need after you've given it a fair shot consider making a change and even more uh, drastically if you are not enjoying the school where you're where you're at if the environment is just not good for you if you're unhappy if the people around you are not it's just bad you're feeling bad all the time you know consider the possibility of transferring out somewhere from my own experience when I first started college I was in Chicago studying with this really great uh, violinist, Soviet violinist by the name of Mark Zinger. He studied with Stolyarsky, you know, in the same studio as uh, David Oystra. And when I, I studied with him for two years, and then when it came time to go to college, I had to make a decision. Do I stay with him and go study at the university where he teaches, which is DePaul University in Chicago, or do I pursue other possibilities? And I, I chose uh, to go and continue studying with him at DePaul University you know the first semester went by and I did make some nice friends and everything but the environment that big university environment uh, living living in the dorms with people who had nothing to do with music and you know it, it's it was just like not a not a good environment for me I was really not happy uh, to the point where I felt my playing getting worse and worse despite the fact that I loved my teacher um, and you know this is nothing to say bad about DePaul it's a great university in fact the year when I went there they were rated among you know the highest um, percentage of happy students um, I guess I was just an anomaly and at that point in life in my development as a violinist and as a person DePaul was just not for me and I dropped out I dropped out of um, after my around the beginning of, of the second semester and for that you know four months or so I just practiced I practiced uh, and prepared myself to go take auditions in New York 
because I decided that that's where I wanted to be. Um, and I'm so happy that I did that because if I had stayed at DePaul for four years, um, I don't know what would have happened. I, I, you know, I'm so grateful that I ended up going to New York and meeting the friends that I did and putting myself into that environment. It was a drastic decision and it shocked my parents, um, but they understood and ultimately you have to do what's right for you. Uh, so don't be afraid of that possibility. You don't owe, uh, you know, your school four years of misery. Nobody needs that. And I'm sure that even though it's uncomfortable for your school, I, I'm sure that they would prefer for you to be happy as well. Um, so that's number five. So those are my um, five do's and don'ts on the official list. Now, I have a bonus, and that is do not limit yourself, okay? So much of your success as a musician is going to rely on, on information and abilities that are not necessarily music related. Um, so much of music, success in the music, comes from understanding business, understanding technology, you know, being able to maybe build your own website, being able to edit your own music, maybe recording music. So much of it has to do with marketing. Not everybody gets picked up by a manager right away. Sometimes you have to do it yourself. You have to know how to do that. Uh, sometimes, you know, you want to create a program, you want to present it in a concert hall, you need to learn how to fundraise. It's just not an excuse anymore. Those days of just being a good musician, then getting picked up by someone who gives you a career, those days are over. Um, so you need to be sort of a well-rounded human being uh, in order to have success in the music world. So do not limit yourself. Take classes that are not music related. If, there is, if your school offers a business class, take it. If your school offers an audio engineering class, take it. You, you, don't, you never know. Even if you get out of school and you don't really know how to make money, you can pick up some extra money doing uh, recordings. Recording musician, editing music, editing music. Um, it's a great way to pick up money. You have to be creative and don't limit your abilities as a human being. Tap into all the different talents that you have. That's definitely an important don't. Don't limit yourself as a person and as a professional entity. If you think I missed some stuff, please feel free to leave a comment in the section below. If you liked the things that I said, um, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, um, and I look forward to the future episodes. Thanks. Mm -hmm.